Hey guys, uh, if anyone watching hasn't seen my earlier video about uh, Socket 3, um, the cutting edge of technology from 1993, you might want to watch that now because um, that was my original video where I went over my original uh, Socket 3 system. And for those of you that don't know, Socket 3 was actually the first Pentium uh, socket. Socket meant for the Pentium chip. Uh, it came out in 1993 and it only supported two Pentiums, a Pentium 60 and a Pentium 66 megahertz. It was pretty short-lived and it was pretty quickly replaced by Socket 5 and then Socket 7 uh, eventually. Um, it, it's also a very rare socket. I've never found a Socket 3 Penny, or sorry, Socket 4 Pentium uh, motherboard in the wild. Um, they're pretty rare, even on eBay, and including the chips. They're at least uncommon, uncommon to rare. Um, so I have had one for a while now, and if any of you guys have watched the earlier video, you realize it was in a much different case. Uh, it was in a larger tower case. The thing with that is you didn't really notice because of how I filmed it, but that, that case wasn't in the best shape. It was actually missing um, a whole side panel. Um, it, it was a cool case, but uh, I just, I could not, I couldn't find the, um, the panel for it. Actually, I don't even think it was a side, it was like a whole thing, the cover. Um, but I, I have acquired this case, and this is the same motherboard in there, but I've pretty much transport planted that motherboard into here, and I've actually updated it too, so this is kind of like an update video on that machine. Um, I made it a, a little bit more capable. Um, originally the setup I had was basically you know, what it came with and what would be, you know, the basic look in 1993, but I've, I've added a little bit to it. Um, I've changed a couple things. I've changed the video card. So we'll just take a look at uh, what I've done with that machine. A little update here. Um, I like this case a lot more. Uh, it's a lot smaller. Obviously it has a full cover now. Um, it has its issues. A little bit rusted at the bottom here, but not too bad. Um, even rocking an earlier Pentium logo there. You can see down there. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty much a standard uh, standard you know small AT case. Um, got turbo button which just doesn't work on a Pentium. Big old power button here. Uh, kind of a little transitional phase. Not quite the switch on the older type cases, but not the little button either. Um, CD-ROM drive, 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, and then uh, this 1.2 megabyte uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive. This doesn't get much use. It's it's really just for looks, but hey, why not? Reset button. Um, there is an LED thing right here for the CPU speed, but it's really kind of weird. Um, on most of these cases, I see they're kind of hard to work with, and if you don't have the manual, it's it's can be really hard. Um, but usually you have to, they're really like awkwardly placed usually and there's usually a ton of jumpers and you have to remove the faceplate and then basically if you don't have a manual that tells you the settings, you, it's basically just trial and error moving jumpers around and seeing what numbers you can form. It's, it can really be a pain. Um, and I've done that before and, and you know I've figured things out. Uh, I don't understand, this one's a little bit different. There's not, there's a few jumpers but there's not like a ton of them. And I don't know how it figures out what number you want in there. Um, anyways, the number, it was just 333. And I don't know, I couldn't figure out how it works, so I just kind of disabled it. So it looks fine, I don't, I don't need it. I know what speed I'm running at. Um, so, not a big deal. Not much to look at on the back. <sighs> Again, pretty standard. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna open it up though and show you guys what I did to this thing what I uh, added to it. Maybe we'll talk about the uh, socket for a little bit more. Alright, so here's the inside of the machine. I don't know how well it can be seen. And um, there's not a whole lot on YouTube about uh, Socket 4 stuff, um, but there is a YouTuber, High Treason. Check out his videos. He's done a couple videos on Socket 4 and they're they're pretty interesting. So check those out. I think I'll, uh, if I remember, I'll leave a link in the description uh, to one of those videos, and then you can find the rest from there. But th they're pretty interesting. Um, anyways, he does he does a couple comparisons with the 60 megahertz and the 66 megahertz, and I don't know, they're just pretty interesting. So, um, anyways, like I said, this is the same motherboard in my earlier video I did. Um, this case is kind of interesting. How there's a whole Kelly like, caddy for the power supply up here. 
like there's you know usually there's not like a whole enclosure for it um, and then that goes for the drives too you have to reach up back there it's a little makes it a little difficult to work with um, here's my hard drive just running an IDE hard drive uh, I believe this is a gigabyte uh, could be more I have DOS 6.22 on there so it doesn't really matter anyways but um, there's that um, AT connector uh, might be a little bit hard to see this board takes a good bit of 70 pin RAM now I only have 32 megabytes but I think it can take up to ooh I want to say 128 megabytes maybe even more um, there's the CPU it's got the heat sink and fan on it to keep it nice and cool um, and here are the cards I so you can see I don't have a ton of things installed basically I have an IO controller a sound card and a video card and uh, these are different from what I originally had in it I'm just gonna pull up this IO card all right so here's the IO card nothing really special here it's controlling my uh, floppy drives and my two IDE devices which is the hard drive and the CD-ROM drive and of course it's got like the serial port connector and all that good stuff uh, probably too dark to see anyways uh, so let's move on first anyways here is the motherboard uh, one to three 16-bit uh, ISA and three PCI PCI on this board seems to be implemented uh, decently I haven't really had any problems with it uh, now the card I originally had in here was a I believe it was a vision card s3 vision card uh, this is what I've got in here now. This is a Venus 6000 uh, 128-bit graphics accelerator, but what makes it interesting is it's a Sung or Sang Labs card, an ET6000. Now, the ET4000 uh, chip that was used in a lot of cards uh, in the DOS era, it's I've said it before, but it's widely looked at as probably the fastest uh, one of the best and reasonably compatible cards. So it's it's really at the top tier uh, for DOS gaming uh, when it comes up, you know, an ET4000 based card. Uh, so this was the successor to that. This is the ET6000. Um, they were kind of losing steam at this point. This is still an extremely fast card. Um, it does very well for 2D stuff and um, it, it does it does really well even you know windows it doesn't do 3d acceleration but it does do a uh, graphical user interface gui uh, acceleration so um, i believe this is a four megabyte card so this is a uh, you know it's a reasonably good card usually this would be really good paired with a uh, like a voodoo card uh, a voodoo card in this machine it's it's a little too slow for that so I didn't really see a point but I kinda had this laying around and I was like well uh, I really want to use this card one day I'm gonna do some speed comparisons between like this and a couple other the the well you know the well thought of uh, PCI cards for 2d but yeah this is this is a pretty fast card um, right here and then probably the most interesting thing I've done is I've added this and um, this is the sound card it's ISA because you really want to go ISA for DOS compatibility but this is a pro audio spectrum 16 and I've been I've been wanting one of these for a while now um, and I kind of found it kind of recently a couple months ago at a swap meet uh, for a good price uh, but these are these are pretty good cards. This is these are from Media Vision, and uh, generally the sound quality on these is better than the Sound Blaster. Um, it is Sound Blaster compatible, and a lot of later game DOS games actually natively support it. So in a lot of later DOS games, you'll actually get uh, an option to use the. Pro Audio Spectrum 16 and also it has a little speaker connector so I have the speaker hooked up so my speaker beeps actually come out through the speaker so that's pretty cool okay so here I am I'm gonna be running uh, some of Phil's DOS benchmarks um, as you see the screen there's a little interference stuff this is me I'm actually it's the first video I'm testing out my uh, RGB capture device so I'm trying to capture uh, pure VGA here 
uh, as opposed to S video. I, I have some mixed results at first because I was still experimenting and uh, there's some kind of interference going on here, but uh, I think it was the cable because I kind of straightened it out later. Anyways, um, yeah, with the the, the ET6000 uh, video card, I do get a little bit better results from my former setup. Uh, I actually get the same results in PCP Bench of 17.6. Um, Doom, though, is a little bit faster, actually. Uh, before with the uh, Vision 868 card, I was getting 37.78 frames per second in the speed test here. Um, with the ET6000 card, I'm getting 39.90, so slightly over two frames per second better. Not a huge increase in uh, speed, but, you know, every little bit counts. So moving on to Quake uh, test, a little bit faster than when I was using the Vision card, but it's really negligible. I was getting less than one frame per second uh, better uh, with the ET6000 card. So a little bit better, but eh, pretty negligible. So to compare this card um, and this machine a little bit against kind of its contemporaries, uh, here's a little graph I made. I'm comparing it against my uh, Shuttle Hot 133 motherboard, which is a late uh, Socket 3 uh, 46 motherboard. Now the video card I had in in that board when I did testing was a Matrox or Matrox uh, G200 uh, PCI card. Um, so that you know that's a later card uh, than the ET6000, and still uh, the Pentium 66 does come up favorably. Uh, PCP Bench it lags behind both the Pentium Overdrive 83 megahertz and the uh, AMD 5X86 at 103 megahertz. Doom though uh, it beats both of them. It beats the uh, the Pentium Overdrive, which is a, a faster chip, and the uh, the AMD 5X86, which is a faster chip, but it's a 486. But uh, I think it's that ET6000 really comes into play there and uh, trumps those by you know a few. Uh, a few frames per second there. Quake is pretty much to be expected. It's beating the uh, AMD 5X86 by about a little more than two frames per second and um, the Overdrive is actually beating the Pentium 66 by a, a couple uh, frames per second which is expected because it's it's a faster Pentium chip. Um, but yeah that's how it stacks up it roughly stacks up here against uh, you know a contemporary board to it. And here's Windows 3.1 that I also have on this machine, which feels uh, very snappy. Um, there are drivers for the ET6000 uh, card, and I have to say it, it does feel uh, very snappy with this card in Windows 3.1. So here, of course, we have Duke Nukem 3D. Um, this is kind of a later DOS game. Uh, it also natively supports the Pro Audio Spectrum 16, which I have installed in this machine. Um, the game played okay. Uh, it's pretty, you know, good for the most part, but it just did feel a little bit off. Uh, like it really wasn't completely smooth. There, there were a couple parts where it was a little, a little bit kind of jittery, I guess, or uh, it just, it just didn't feel completely smooth. It just. It didn't feel like it had quite the power, uh, even though this game was optimized for the Pentium. It just, it, I mean, I really recommend playing it on a little bit more powerful of a Pentium. It just didn't feel completely smooth on uh, this particular uh, socket for uh, 66 megahertz Pentium.
And that's really about it for this video. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. Um, I'm, you know, working out the bugs with my uh, VGA capture solution right now. It, some of these images a lot better than S-Video, but uh, I still need to figure out the software and, uh, you know, tweak the settings and stuff. It, right now it's a bit of a hassle uh, to do, but uh, I'm working on it uh, so I can have a little bit better quality videos here. Um, but that's about it. Yeah, the, the the upgrades I did, you know, not a huge difference, um, but the ET6000, it's a pretty good 2D card. Uh, I would really recommend it if you can find it for a decent price. They tend to go for a premium, of course, on eBay. Um, and uh, Pro Audio Spectrum 16, an uh, interesting little card. I'm I really growing to like it, uh, although it does sound weird to me in uh, some instances, <laughs> but I'm just used to the sound blaster. Um, anyways, thank you all again for watching. Uh, I've got some pretty interesting stuff uh, hopefully coming up with uh, later videos, and thank you all again for watching and uh, subscribing. and.